Hi everyone, it's Latin Roses. Today I want to talk to you about, sorry about that, how to manifest your dream job. Now, I bought into a lot of ideas that maybe some of you are buying into that didn't serve me and kind of are the reasons that it kind of holds us back and keeps us from manifesting the dream job that we want. So I'm a federal employee and I've had a long career you know, being a civil servant, servant. And I noticed in my office that I am now that a lot of folks were jumping over me for promotions. And most of them were, sorry, it's my dog right there. He has to be in every video. Most of them were, came in after me, you know, like way at, just barely got there a year or two. And then they were jumping over everybody in the office for promotions. And it was very frustrating. And after the last time that it happened, I didn't take it very well. I, I was seeing year after year, you know, all these other folks getting promoted that, in my opinion, didn't have the experience and have the knowledge that I did in comparison. I put out fires on the job. I was well liked. So I didn't understand what the problem was. You know, even speaking with supervisors, I really couldn't understand what the problem was. So I bought into the idea or ideas that a lot of us do when we look at the outside circumstances around us. The reality around us, you start to blame outwardly. I was thinking about, okay, this is not fair. I've been here the longest. I'm most knowledgeable. I deserve to be promoted. I, I would say these, it's, there's favoritism going on. This is just, this is not right after all the hard work that I do. So the first year that, the last time that I was um, passed over for a promotion, I was very upset and I was not um, thinking about how I could get promoted anymore. I just kind of stopped. Then one day we had two receptionists in our office that eventually got promoted as well. And they came in again after me. And so we had no receptionist at that point. So our office manager said that the whole staff, everybody was going to have to rotate and take turns working the front desk, which requires getting there super early in the morning before the actual office opens to the public so that we can get the hearing rooms ready. I work for judges. And you have to get the hearing rooms ready, turn on the equipment. You've got to get all the paperwork ready for the upcoming hearings. And there are a lot of things you got to do before you just turn on the phones and start serving the public. So I would get there early every time it was my turn. I was, up, I was in the office early every day because that was just my shift. And I would have all my stuff ready. And a lot of people noticed, my coworkers noticed that I was getting there super early. So they would ask me, um, can I help open the, up the hearing rooms for them? Can I get the paperwork uh, ready for the hearings? Can I get everything started because they were going to run late um, or they knew they weren't going to be able to do all that in time? And so in the beginning, sometimes I did and sometimes I didn't. I kind of had the attitude, well, I can do it, you know, why can't you? And I kind of felt like maybe some of them were just trying to push their work off on me, that they were being a little lazy. And I didn't always want to be helpful with them. But then I start noticing something from observing that I would notice that when those people, I didn't help, they would come in late. And then they were scrambling at the last minute to um, get everything ready. And then I noticed that the people that we serve were suffering. They were, they were having to wait to be served longer. They were having to wait with, uh, with somebody who was frazzled, frustrated, upset, not ready to go. And I just imagined myself on the other side uh, not receiving the best customer service. And I think we've all been on the other side where we haven't received the best customer service. So I made a decision after seeing that, that since I am one of the first people in the office in the morning, that's not 
doesn't take that much more extra time out of my day to go open up all the hearing equipment in the hearing rooms, all the computers, to get all the paperwork ready to make sure it's ready for the day. And, you know, just so when the next person that has to come work the front desk, they're there, it's not a big deal. They're ready to go. They're not, they're less frustrated and frazzled. And they're ready to serve the public that we are sworn to serve. So that started working out better. And then the judges started noticing that their hearing rooms were being open and prepared on time and they didn't have to worry about that. Everybody was noticing, the security guard was noticing, management was noticing, everything was running smoother. And the people who were coming in late that just had everything ready for them when they came open, they were grateful and everybody noticed. So that just kept snowballing. And to the point where I had that desk ready, you know, really efficiently and, if, and it was ready to go. And I knew I was monitoring it and making sure all of a sudden it gave me such pleasure to make sure that the public was being served. It gave me such pleasure to make sure that that desk was running smoothly. It felt like mine. I felt like I was managing it. I felt like I was a manager and that I was just really in my element. I was helping others and it was just perfect. So after that management noticed and then there, there came open a temporary opening for, um, they call it a lead, but it's almost like a mini manager. You help out other employees when they're out sick, you come in and step in and take their work and you put out fires and you help the supervisors by taking on some extra things that they wouldn't have to do because you're helping them. So I was doing this detail for about three months and I was really enjoying it, but I, I thought to myself, you know, I really don't want to go back to doing what I was before this temporary promotion. And I don't want to keep doing the same kind of job easy, this, this particular job. And I liked a lot of the aspects of what I was doing, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I wanted to be able to do a little bit of writing of decisions and I, I wanted to also help people and put out fires without always having to do somebody else's work to fill in when they're gone. I, I was really just, and I kind of wanted to oversee some projects and things and I was really wanted something more like that. And I was literally thinking this on a daily basis when I was doing this uh, temporary promotion detail. And as soon as it ended, I'm telling you literally a week later, they announced in our staff meeting that a new position was coming open to our agency that never was offered before to try to give people that were kind of like stuck in a dead end, like they had nowhere else to go to get promoted to, um, to finally get promoted to higher grades. And the position description was exactly what I was thinking in my mind. So I was anxiously applied for that job and I just knew, sorry, it's my dog. I just knew that position was mine. I, I knew it was going to make the most eligible list. And I did, I think my, I was up against, uh, over 50 people or more that are applying for that job. And people outside of our, our office were applying for that job. And I started practicing as soon as I knew I made the best qualified last, I started practicing how to interview I did techniques. I think I did that for like three weeks straight. Then I went out and got a bunch of different outfits to interview in and I nailed the interview. I got selected for the job. I beat out lots of people. And I think it honestly actually started with my mind. I was living from the end. I was living as if I already had the job that I wanted and it manifested into my reality but I want you to pay attention to the attitude change that changed it all. I let go of the idea that of a tr unfair treatment on the job. I let go of the idea of favoritism real or not. I let go of, I'm the, I've been there the longest, so I should rightfully be my next turn was to be the next one in front. I let go of all of that. And I just became in my mind what I wanted it to be. I knew 
I was the most knowledgeable. I knew I was there the longest. I knew I knew how to do my job really well. And I took it up another level by taking over that receptionist desk and managing it and not caring about fairness. It's not fair that somebody's pushing their duties off on me. It's not, care, it's not fair that I'm having to come up here every day and do this. It became a pleasure to do it, a pleasure to serve others, a pleasure to help. That manifested, it started the ball rolling to manifest all of these things for me. And everybody notices your change, your attitude, your efficiency, your reliability. You know, the judges started bragging on me how I was handling situations for them in the, in the hearing room. Other, the computer guy was bragging on me that he showed me how to do things with the computers that helped the judges when he, in the absence when he couldn't be there. And other um, staff members were praising me for helping them out in the front before they got there. And so it just, it just snowballed into some beautiful, beautiful thing that just kept going. And then once I got to that point, it allowed me to springboard to have the opportunity to do that, you know, temporary part-time um, promotion. And then my thoughts, I knew what I wanted. And I really know I manifested that job. This was a new position that never existed before in my agency, ever. And it just it just seemed to come out of nowhere. And I know in my mind, in my soul, I know that I, I didn't manifest that. I'm crazy as that might sound to a lot of you and to some people, I know it's true. And if you're not familiar with Neville Goddard's work, um, he always talks about manifesting with your imagination, living from the end. If you're living for the end, let's say you want a, a house, and you already pretending you're living there, especially every night before you go to sleep, you pretend you're sleeping in the new house, that reality has no choice but to conform to that and manifest for you. And I've lived it, I believe it, I've seen it. So if you have a job that you wanna do, already believe that you know how to do it, and think, think about it from the end that you're already doing it, and you know, like, if you want to be boss and manager, get a cup that says boss lady or boss and drink out of it every day. Carry it with you. See it in your mind. Um, don't just, like, do those tapping exercises or um, keep watching videos like I love money, money comes to me because if you need to manifest money, actually live from the end as if you have it and what you're going to do with it. And that will make these things manifest into your life faster. And sometimes we get stuck. I've gotten stuck. Like you try to, you really want it so bad and you're always concentrating on it. But when you're concentrating on it and wanting it so bad, you're pushing it away because you're giving off the signals that you don't think you could have it. You don't have it yet. It's, it's neediness, it's desperation. And that stops it. So when you're relaxed, like 100% relax. I know it can be hard, but it's very important. You have to relax and know it's already yours and just act like it. Just act as if it's already here, it's already there, and it comes into fruition. And sometimes it comes so natural that you can't kind of think it was going to happen anyway. So this is my story, and I'm looking forward to sharing much more manifesting stories with you. If you have some stories you'd like to share with me and others, please leave them in the comments below. I love to hear from you guys and I love your questions. Keep them coming and I really am so inspired by all of you. And I hope I do continue to inspire all of you too. So as always, I wish you love, peace, and joy. Okay, I'm glad you're still here. There's one thing I wanted to clear up. I notice when I'm doing my story time videos, when I'm sitting on my couch and my dog comes by, you always see me going like this. It's because I'm petting him. He's moving around, and to keep him quiet, I just pet him. If I don't pet him, he cries. If I throw him outside, he cries. If I throw him in a room, he cries. 
if I keep him right by my side, he's moving around, but he's not crying, so I apologize. I have a Maltese who's quiet. He doesn't care what I do. Well, he does, but you know what I'm saying. He's very quiet. This other dog is special needs, so I apologize. And so don't pay attention to this when you listen to my videos, unless you like kind of stuff. But just pay attention to what I'm saying and ignore this because I know it's annoying. It annoys me back on playback for edit. So thank you for um, sticking around and making my uh, videos a success. Thank you for sharing and liking and subscribing. I love you all. Bye.